In this video, we are going to solve problem 1 in IMO 1965. To find all x that is between 0 and 2 pi, such that the absolute value of the square root of 1 plus sine 2x minus the square root of 1 minus sine 2x is both greater than or equal to 2 cosine x and less than or equal to root 2. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. When I first saw this problem, my first approach was to try to remove the, net, the square root signs. So, all I did was rewriting sine of 2x as 2 times sine x cos x and the 1 into sine square x plus cos square x. So that means the expression inside the absolute value sign becomes the difference of square roots of sine x plus cos x whole squared minus square roots of sine x minus cos x whole squared. But this does not help simplifying the problem because this will only give the absolute value of sine x plus cos x minus the absolute value of sine x minus cos x. As the value of x changes, the value of these expressions can change. Not simply changing from some positive numbers to some other positive number, but it could turn negative. So it would affect the output after squaring and doing the square root. For example, if a number inside, say, is minus 1, the square root of minus 1 whole squared is not minus 1, but it's equal to 1. So the values just hop everywhere. It can hop to everywhere. So I have to look for an unusual approach. And what I chose was to try to consider the square of the middle expression instead. So I'm going to try to square the whole thing in the middle. So notice that if I try to square this whole thing, I'm going to get two expressions that do not contain the square root sine minus two times the square root of one minus sine squared two x. It's simply the, the product. Simplifying, I'm going to get. 2 minus 2 times square root of cos square of 2x. And again, I can say that is equal to 2 minus 2 times the absolute value of cos 2x. Notice that these can lead to two possible cases. The first case is that this will equal to 2 minus 2 times cos 2x if cos of 2x is greater than or equal to 0. This would happen when 2x is be between 0 and pi over 2, which is actually the first quadrant, or is between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. That's the fourth quadrant. Now notice that we're given that x is between 0 and 2 pi, so that means 2x can be between 0 and 4 pi. So we need to go for a second loop. And for the fourth region, I have 7 pi over 2 and 4 pi. Now combining, for convenience, I'm going to rewrite that as x to between minus pi over 4 and pi over 4. 
actually combining these two together. And for the other two right and for the other two regions, I'm going to combine them and say x is between 3 pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. Combined by the other two regions. So that's the first case. Well, for the second case, it's going to equal to 2 plus 2 times cos 2x. If cos 2x is negative, it's actually just the other four. The other regions excluding those that I've mentioned in the first case. So they are pi between x is between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. And the second region is that x is between, not, not x, but 2x between 5 pi over 2 and 7 pi over 2. Simplifying I'll get these two regions Now apart from removing the absolute value sign I can also simplify these two expressions a bit So they're going to equal to 2 times 1 minus cos 2x and it's actually 2 times 1 minus 1 minus 2 sine square x and that's 4 sine square x and for the other case it's going to equal to 2 times 1 plus cos 2x 2 times 1 plus 2 cos square x minus 1 and that's 4 cos square x so these are the two possible cases if I square the middle part. Now there's something special to our results. For the second case, for values of x that would give that would make cos of 2x negative, if I square the middle part, I'm gonna get 4 cos square x, and this is exactly the square of 2 cos x, the leftmost part of our original compound inequality. Now from this I can say that whenever x falls into this region the left inequality must hold because it is exactly equal to the leftmost part whole squared so no matter it takes positive or negative it would definitely be either larger or equal to 2 cos x so pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4 to 7 pi over 4 must satisfy the leftmost, the left inequality. Another way to justify uh, what I said just now is that the middle part can be written as the absolute value of 2 cos x when x falls into the regions in the blue box. So our original inequality will become the absolute value of 2 cos x is between 2 cos x and square root of 2. Now what I, what I was saying is this inequality would obviously hold because 2 cos x can be either positive or negative but under the absolute value sign it can only be positive. So when 2 cos x is positive this inequality would, the equality of this part would hold. Otherwise, the positive number will be greater than the negative number. Now, what remains for these two subcases would be to consider the inequality absolute value of 2 cos x is less than or equal to square root of 2. 
Now I can try to split the absolute value sign by saying that 2 cos x is between plus or minus square root of 2. Simplifying, I will need cos x to be between plus or minus square root of 2 over 2. Now notice that The regions that we are considering are these regions. I'll try to visual I'll try to visualize them. The regions are labeled in yellow. For cosine. At the boundaries, we are going to get root 2 over 2, minus root 2 over 2, minus root 2 over 2, and root 2 over 2 over here in the four respective quadrants. And when x is power for 2 or 3 power for 2, cosine of that would give 0. So we can see that by continuity, as x goes travels inside the yellow regions, it can never escape the range plus or minus square root of 2 over 2. So that means these two regions must be part of our solutions. The compound inequality will hold inside these regions. X is, when x is between pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4, and when x is between 5 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. So we've set to one of the cases. Now we come to the other case. So another way of writing this range would be 0 between x is between 0 and power over 4 and x is between 7 power over 4 and 2 pi. But because the value of sine of cosine x would not change when x differs by multiples of 2 pi, so I just combine them into the range minus power over 4 and power over 4. But anyway, Using a similar trick like before, I can say that if I have the after squaring of the middle part, I get 4 sine square x. That means our original inequality changes to the absolute value of 2 sine x to between 2 cos x and square root of 2. First, I'm going to look at the light blue box when x is between 3 pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. This case is relatively simpler because under this range this is negative. x is traveling between quadrants 2 and 3 so regardless 2 cos x must be negative so we'll always have the left inequality. To hold. As for the right inequality again, I can try to remove the absolute value sign and solve it. So I have minus root 2 over 2 at the lower bound and root 2 over 2 at the upper bound. Again, I can try to visualize We are somewhere inside this region for three, between 3 pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. Now the boundary values are both minus 2 over both square roots of 2 minus square roots of 2 over 2. And there's an error. This should actually take this should actually take positive. So we have 1 plus and 1 minus. As we travel inside this region, sine of x cannot, cannot escape from plus or minus square root of 2 over 2. So again, the light blue, the range label in light blue should hold. Now finally for the last case, when x is between minus power over 4 and power over 4,
For this case, I'll have to split even further. One of them is the quadrant 4 case, while for the other case, is 0 and pi over 4. Now for this case, for the left inequality, it becomes 2 cos x less than or equal to 2 sin x. So that means cos x is less than or equal to sin x. But we all know that is not true, because for that to hold, under this case, we must have tangent x to be greater than or equal to 1. I can divide both sides by cos without changing the sign, because both sine and cosine are positive. But we know that when x is between 0 and power 4, tangent is less than 1 less than or equal to 1, so this is wrong. As for the case in quadrant 4, we know that in quadrant 4, sine is negative, so 2 cos x is less than or equal to minus 2 sine x. So minus tangent x is greater than or equal to 1, that means tangent x is less than or equal to minus 1. But we know that for this case, it should be the other way around, which means tangent x should have been larger, larger than or equal to minus 1 as it's approaching closer and closer to 0. So again, it's wrong. So that means the entire range of x to be between plus or minus power for 4 is wrong. Now combining all the cases, our final answer should be x to be between pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. And this is the final answer.